Hello everybody, welcome back to Frontier Patriot. My name is Ron Rayfield and this is my beautiful, lovely, blossoming, sunshine, <laughs> dandelion of co-host Justine Dorn. Oh my, you always put me I on love, the spot with these intros. I know, I love this new dress that you got. This is the second Thank time you. you've worn this on the channel. Thank you. I think yellow is a good color on brunettes. It, it looks very nice on you. Thank you, I'm flattered. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to another tune chat. Today we have made ye old jelly. Ye old jelly! Okay, what kind of jelly we got here? Now, if I would just walk up to a random person and I said, try out this jelly, I wonder what they would say. Hmm. I think they would say... I think it's skeptical. It, they'd say, is it... Le skeptical? No, I'm saying they would say it's lemon curd, probably. Or okay. it's honey. It, like if they tried it and then told you what they thought. Yeah, what flavor do you think they think it would be? Probably honey, but if, uh, you, told, if you just walked up to me and said, hey, you want to try some dandelion jelly? I'd probably be like, nah. Nah, it probably, probably tastes gonna, like spinach. Yeah, it's probably gonna be horrible. A squirrel peed on it or something. I cannot guarantee. That's why it's yellow. I hope they're in a twain. Okay, so this is dandelion jelly. This is one of the best jellies known to man, but for some reason, not many people make it. There's just, um, like, people just have this stigma against dandelions. You know, it's like. It's a weed! I kind of think that since the Great Depression, everyone was foraging for dandelions. Now we just associate dandelions with, oh, you eat that? You can't actually buy it, you know? But dandelions are, they taste absolutely amazing and they're very healthy for you. So dandelion <laughs> jelly is made from the flowers, the yellow flowers, mm -hmm. and it tastes like honey with, I mean, it's just so good. It's so, so good. and. and it's also called dandelion honey, by the way. That's another name for it. Yes. Now, the mm. first time we've tried this, or at least the first time I've tried it, was last summer at Thornhill Mansion uh, up at Faust Park in St. Louis. One of the uh, ladies who was demonstrating cooking that day had her own dandelion jelly, and she offered us some, and it tasted just like honey, like we a were, really sweet version of honey. We were blown away, weren't we? Yes. I, I mean, I didn't know what to expect coming into trying that, but it wasn't that. I mean, this to me, this is 10 out of 10 right here. Well, I'd like to try it so I can give you my review. Cut yourself up some bread. <laughs> put some jelly on that I bread. Will. Let's get going. <laughs> I already got my piece here. Now, if, if you guys want to see Justine make this jelly and make this bread, please go over to our main channel. It's Early American over there. We cook it. And here we eat it. And here we eat it. Okay, here's a jelly. This bread looks fantastic. Oh, it smells fantastic too. Fresh bread. It just it smells good. It tastes good and it feels good. Yes, and it's good for you. So this time I used uh, two cups of white flour and then one cup of the uh, heirloom whole wheat flour that we grow around here. Yes. Yeah, so it really, really made it come out really nice. Oh, he's going in, he's going in. Mm. Trying that dandelion jelly. Have you guys tried dandelion jelly? Let us know. You can't buy it in stores. That's good. That's good. It's very bright with the, the lemon that you put in it. Yes, it has a citrus honey flavor. It's It tastes like summertime. It's so yes. fresh. Now, the lady that was at Thornhill, she mm. didn't have lemon in hers, did she? It was just I plain? Just, I don't know. I, I, know, I didn't see her make this, it. I don't this know. tastes different because I think she didn't put lemon, but this is like, uh, bam, right in your face. It is. It's it's bright. It's citrusy. Mm. It's sweet. I like that. It has a good texture to it. Spreadable. It is divine. Look at that. That spread so nice, crust to crust, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, around here in Missouri and in most of the United States, honestly, dandelions are the first flower to pop up in spring. It is spring! I don't know when you guys are watching this, but it is officially spring. <laughs> it's been spring for a couple of days now. Mm -hmm. Finally! I hate winter time! <laughs> Sorry, Dang. I am not one of those people that likes winter. I love spring and fall. Those are the two seasons I adore. Breaking out the H word, man. Yeah, hate. Don't hate, appreciate. <laughs> but this time, I be hating. I don't like winter, and I'm glad that it's gone. All right, you ready for this rating? Okay, give you give us a review, scale of one to 10, how would you review Justine's Dandelion Jelly? This is not made from historic receipt, by the way. It's just my own recipe for it. Then. You really like it that much? I like it. I'm it's going in for It's so more. good, isn't it? Thank you. <clears throat> they compliments the spread very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is some good stuff. The bread's some good stuff, too. It's very hearty. I haven't ate today. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a little bit of breakfast, but I missed a midday uh, meal. We've been really busy out the property here. Oh, lately. yeah. We got to talk about that. Yeah. We got some updates. I'm really glad that you like that jelly, though. 
So I don't have a historic receipt for it, but this is definitely a very historic dish. Now in the 1800s, it was called dandelion honey. Mm. And back in the, back in the day, okay, so let's talk about pectin. There's pectin in this. I decided to put pectin in it. It's Justine's own recipe. No particular time period we're doing. I just do early 1800s, you know, no particular year. Mm -hmm. Pectin first became popular in the first half of the 1800s. I think it was invented. I forget the dude's mm -hmm. name, but in 1825. It was isolated, yeah. It was first isolated and like sold in the 1820s. Mm -hmm. Now, before then, how did people make jelly? Because they certainly had jelly and jams before 1825. It Before just, that. It took longer, didn't it? Well, it took it down. to be honest, I think it took less because it takes forever for pectin to solidify. <laughs> it takes 24 to 48 hours. But so before that, in the 18th century and earlier, in order to make jelly, you just had to cook it down mm -hmm. until it was a syrup. Basically, you had to cook it and cook it and cook it, stir constantly until all the liquid evaporated out of it, or at least a lot of that liquid. And so it would be a very thick, concentrated super sweet mm. jelly. You gotta get this away from me. <laughs> I don't want, I don't I'm want gonna, to get it away from you. I'm gonna go crazy and I'm gonna eat this all. Just do it. No. Do it. I'll be diabetic by the end of this video. Well, that might, that might be true, yes. Yeah, let's not do that. Okay, I'm gonna go in myself even though I can only eat on one side of my <laughs> teeth here. Yes, she finally got that old wisdom tooth taken out. I did, I got it taken out six days ago. It was the lower one on this side of my mouth. Mm -hmm. It's the only wisdom tooth that I have that's ever given me issues. You know, I was very nervous about going in to get my wisdom tooth removed because I've never been under full anesthesia before. Yeah, they completely knocked me out. It wasn't just local anesthesia. They gave Ron, me. Is that you, Ron? No. I got my tooth taken <laughs> out. But I will. Uh, what oh, happened? Stop it! What year is it? Stop it! It's 1825. <laughs> we have pectin now. Oh. I was nervous. The anesthesia freaked me out more than anything else. But the doctors, the thorough surgeons, were super nice about oh. it, and it was oh. weird. I have never been fully under. I was just talking with them like normal and they gave me the IV version, not the gas. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they did because gas kind of freaks me out. They had to poke me three times, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you got a nice little bruise going yeah, on. Yeah, it's almost that. gone now. But they poked me twice in here. Couldn't find a vein that was big enough, so they put it in my hand. Ouch. But I took it like a champ. Yes, and you did. Thank you. And they said, okay, you're probably going to pass out in about 30 seconds. And I was just saying, Great. okay, uh, just looking around, you know, talking with people. And then, boom. She was out. Boom. I didn't know I was out. All of a sudden, there were five people in the room. And then, boom, there was one person in the room. It was the nurse. And then she looked at me and she said, okay, Justine, I'm going to help you up. We're going to go to the other room. Ron's waiting for you. <laughs> what, what just happened? And I think, okay, you were telling me that I was going to wake up and I was going to start saying funny things. Probably. Hallucinating. Some but I, people, they wake up mm -hmm. like kind of hallucinating or that, you know, I don't uh, have this way. I, when I had all four of mine taken out at one time, I was under for longer. So I think the longer you're under, the more doped up you are, if you will. And yeah. apparently uh, the lady come out and asked my mom, because this was in, in high school. And uh, she said, is your son by chance ride dirt bikes or play, <laughs> and play the drums? Because apparently I was riding Bingo. a dirt bike and I was playing drums at the same time. And I remember waking up to that song by Phil Collins and Aaron Knight was on. And I, so I guess I was like, do, 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 Oh, you were do, playing do, do. to it. I can feel it. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, I had no control over it. But yeah. I couldn't walk to the car. Justine yeah. had walked her out. She was, she I was just, slow. But. I was fine. I, I woke up. And it was like nothing happened to me. I just, I held the nurse's hand, but I didn't really need to. And I walked to the other room and I wasn't talking funny, right? You repeated yourself a few times, but. Repeated myself? It's to be expected after you've been on anesthesia. Oh, okay. I just repeated myself. But then after that, we merely went to the pharmacy. Then we, then I went to. To the grocery a, store? To the grocery store. Uh, Ron was driving, obviously. You're not supposed to drive. And then I no. went, and then I went gardening for a couple hours. And. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing happened. I don't know. I, I mean, I had a very good experience. And let's talk about the opposite, having your tooth pulled out oh, yeah. in the 18th century. 
Mm. Would that have been a pleasant experience compared to how no. it is today? Heck no. 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 It's barbarous. Barbarous? I don't even know if it's a word. It's barbaric. <laughs> barbaric, that's the word, yeah. <laughs> I'm uneducated, okay? Oh, you're <laughs> I only fine. went to 12th grade. Oh, come on. That's fine. That's more than a lot of people <laughs> to go to. No, it was like torture. Mm. They got these devices that you just stick down in there, you turn, and then... <laughs> By the way, I got to keep my tooth. Yeah, you did. And they had they had to cut it out in multiple pieces because it was curved like a banana. Because it had been in there for so long that uh -huh. it just, you know, did its It was thing. deep. Yeah, so he had to use some, probably some freaky looking tools. Yeah, probably. To get it out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking of teeth, that's this, weird, blah, 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 blah. that's this week's weird history fact. Did you guys know that people would use to buy children's teeth? <laughs> what? There was people who would lure your child into the back alley. No. If you live in the city, of course. No. If you live in or they the, had alleys. Yeah, if you live in the country, there's not an alley, but they'll still lure your kid to behind the barn and be like, hey, Sonny, you want to make a shilling? And we have that tooth there. Oh, no. Why? Oh, yeah. What would they do with the teeth? kid's teeth? Come find out. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, implants and dentures have been around for hundreds of years. Oh, my gosh. I had no idea. So, they also used to fill teeth with lead, with gold, as you know, and, and they did silver for a while, too, yeah. I believe. But it used to be lead. <laughs> so, you're telling me they would take kids' teeth and make fake teeth? Mm -hmm. Well, they weren't fake, but I mean, like, uh, what, do you, what do you call veneers? that? Veneers? Not a veneer, a... Um, uh, dentures, basically. A, a denture yeah. or a... Uh, what's the... I forget the name when it's just like two teeth you gotta put in. It's almost like a, a retainer, but it has like two teeth on it. Instead oh, of and you can take it out? Yeah, I forget what in. that's called. I don't know. I'm actually a, a, glad I don't know. A partial denture, that's what that I'm gonna call it. Oh. But, but anyways, uh, they would make dentures out of out of uh, human teeth. I mean, that was the best thing to make dentures out of, so you'd look normal. Otherwise, you'd have like carved ivory or carved bone or porcelain. Even George Washington had a set of porcelain teeth at one time. Uh, when he was a younger man, but they kept getting stained from eating and drinking uh, things that had color in it, like uh, wine, lots of wine, tea, so it, coffee. <laughs> he had to send them to have them cleaned, and eventually he had a pair of ivory ones made. People think he had wooden teeth. He didn't that's, have wooden that's teeth. That's not real. That's I don't even know where that comes from. You think my teeth? I don't know where my teeth are. <laughs> All right, now I got my teeth back. <laughs> Thankfully, you don't eat teeth to eat dandelion jelly. But anyways, look into it. They, they, it, it's crazy. I, I could not decipher it. In the middle of this house build and the wedding and all the craziness going on, just go down the rabbit hole of the uh, 1600s and 1700s. That's where it gets really crazy. People thought that worms were embedded in your teeth, and that's where tooth decay came from before some yeah. guy in the mid-1700s proved that wrong by doing experiments on... I guess people's teeth that he pulled out or he had them eat certain things and then observed it and how fast yeah. they brought it out. But they used to think that worms were, worms were in your teeth and they were what ate your teeth out. Yeah, so okay, nowadays um, we know cavities and tooth decay are not caused by worms. No. <laughs> I'm trying to think what it's caused by. Sure. Well, yeah, but what what... What does that lead to, it, you know? It eats the uh, enamel away. Then your tooth is not protected anymore. Okay, it might be that simple or it might be more complicated. Do you guys mm. know? This I'm, is... I'm not a Any dentist in the room? Like, what actually causes tooth decay? Well, you know it ain't worms. Right. So, <laughs> in, so in, worms. in the centuries past, people used to think that if you had an infected tooth, it was caused by an infection of worms. Like, these microscopic little tiny worms that were eating away at the inside of your tooth. And they believed that for a thousand years. thousand years, yeah. It, this goes back a very long time in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy, it's bizarre. And they didn't stop thinking that mm -hmm. until, what was it, the 17th century? Yeah, the first half mm -hmm. of the, oh no, the first half of the uh, 18th century. Oh my, okay. So around 1820, mm. I forgot the fellow's name. Wait, what, you said 1820. Oh, 1720, I'm sorry. 1720. There's so many dates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty That's pretty wild. Now, when I had my tooth pulled out and they let me keep it, naturally, my first thought is, I haven't had a visit from the tooth fairy in a long time. We're mm -hmm. overdue. She better pay up. Yeah, with interest. <laughs> so I start thinking as I was putting my, my uh, wisdom tooth underneath my pillow, what, where did that story even come from? My guess, it's the like- Tooth fairy. I'm guessing it's from medieval times. 
It turns out that the history of the Tooth Fairy goes back very, very far. Um, as early as the 10th century, hmm. the Norse people of Europe, um, you might know them as the Vikings, they were the first to hold on to a child's missing teeth. They thought that if they buried or discarded the teeth, that it would give the child good luck in the next life. Hmm. Now, where did the tradition of Putting the teeth under the pillow come from? That came from the 17th century. It's actually French. In the 17th century, there was a French fairy tale called The Good Little Mouse, and it's thought to be the inspiration for the fairy uh, putting a tooth under your pillow. So like all fairy tales of the time period, it's extremely violent, naturally. So <laughs> it centers around a queen who takes revenge against her husband's death and she does this by targeting the evil king of a rival kingdom. And ever, after spending years in prison by this king, the queen finally defeats the captor with the assistance of a fairy, a good fairy. The fairy turns herself into a little mouse, and that's how she's able to get into the king's chambers. And then the mouse knocks all of the king's teeth out of his head, and then he hides them under his pillow so that the king doesn't find them. And then he eventually just kills the king. That just kills the king. Well, he knocks all of his teeth out. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I swear all the fairy tales from back then were so violent and graphic. So They are. But you know when you hear fairy, you know it's going to be from like an old pagan belief system. A so fable tale. Yeah, a fable. Like something <laughs> that goes back many, many centuries. So uh, originally it is from you could say like a Viking tradition, but the pillow comes from a, f it's a French, French from tradition. From the 1600s. Yeah, the, se the 17th century, yeah. that's right. That's the first mention of a mouse. And a mouse being involved with the Tooth Fairy goes for a couple of centuries mm. after that. And I think only fairly recently have we ditched the mouse. <laughs> yeah, in the 20th century, we ditched the mouse. Like, okay, it's not a mouse anymore that, takes your tooth and leaves some change behind. It's some pretty some lady. pretty fairy, I guess. Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. It's not really something that's ever been identified to me as a kid. You know, when I was a kid <laughs> and I had a tooth that was loose and sometimes I'd pull them out myself or they'd fall out mm -hmm. and other times they'd be like, eh, it hurts. And then so my dad would go get the pliers and <laughs> pull it right out. Ow! Like the cold, big, rusty pliers? Oh, yeah. yeah, straight out of the toolbox. Your dad would do that, would That's you? why I'm <laughs> big and strong today. That's why I'm I got emotionally my... damaged. No, I got my iron intake. Yeah, for a lifetime. All right, real quick, update mm -hmm. on the house. Uh, we have all the plumbing done, which I don't mm -hmm. know if I mentioned that last week, but I'll mention it now. That's done. Uh, the people who are putting the signing on are coming next week. Yeah. The guy that was supposed to dig the well is... Not coming. Two and a half weeks late, and he says it might be two more weeks, so stay tuned on that. And we have all the holes dug in the ground for our barn tomorrow, actually. Justine and I and the boys, the river rats, they're going to come out and they're going to help us stand up the big <laughs> six by six uh, posts for our barn that we're going to be putting yeah. up this weekend, or at least getting the, the post set this weekend. We won't have mm -hmm. it finished for a little while. But yeah, building a house and the barn at the same yeah, time. So, Lord, help us! So we're just hop, skipping, and jumping all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it's... It's crazy. We're we're busy. We're tired. We're busy. That's we're, why we're, we're wore out. We're yeah. broke. We're we're broke. Uh, what's the other word? We're desperate. We're desperate. Uh, desperate for what? I don't know. It just it's to be good. done. Yeah, for it to be done. <laughs> we're desperate for it to be done. I mean, I've had so many people comment and say, "Oh, I remember the days when I was building a house. With my husband, you'll look so fondly back on those days no. and wish you could go back." Mm -mm. I'm gonna say denied. I mean. We're so tired, guys. Yeah. It's a lot of work when you're working yeah. a regular, or, or, you know, our job is full-time. It's not a regular type job, per se, but it's a full-time job. And we do work at the museum in town, too. Right. There's yeah. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so and we're just doing a lot. people try to have normal lives and Wedding relationship, planning. relationships with friends yeah. and family and uh -huh. such as well. And also just build this it's like a crazy reality show the other day i was out there i was like you know i feel like i'm on one of those reality shows where they just send you out in the woods with like a toothpick and Naked like a piece and of string afraid. and you have to like build a city well we have to build this mansion it has to look historical but yet it has to be built conveniently to modern standards for so comfortability we can, so we can live there and forever. it has to be done like that mm -hmm. and we're getting married and it's just it's a lot of 
pressure. It's a lot of stuff just yeah. to get done. This ain't no starter home in town that, you know, could be thrown up in a week. And This is our, our one and done And we're house. doing it ourselves, so mm -hmm. we don't know what we're doing. We've we're never done this before. We're having to research all along the way, backtrack, fix mistakes, all kinds of stuff. We have never, it's just, ever done this It's before. pretty daunting. Um, yeah, it's just insane. Oh, yeah. Okay, now. So, I, I apologize if it's not, you know, if a big portion of the house ain't done each week, it's impossible for me to do it and then mm. be here to do this and all the other things I have to do. And okay. same for Justine, so. Okay, so anyway, um, like, going back to the well guy, we've had a serious issue with our well guy. So far, all the people in that area, the, the house location is about uh, 40 miles from St. Jen Town, downtown, where we always hang out. So the people in that area don't seem to be so reliable. Yes, they're very nice, but they don't very seem nice. to be very reliable when it comes to work. No. So, so far we've outsourced from <laughs> back home areas yeah, to come away. over there. So we're supposed to be meeting with another well guy um, in a day or two. I, I forget at the moment, but anyways, we're gonna try for somebody else because we need water Yeah. in order to survive at bare minimum. I can't have a garden like, okay, anyway, four months ago, I contact the well guy. In December, yeah. Yeah, I contact the well guy, and I, I tell him the thing, you know, to come out, whatever. He comes out a week later, which is great, yeah. just to look at it. He looks at it, and he says, okay, I think it's going to cost this much. Right. We ask him, when can you come out? He says, probably the first week of March. Yeah. He that says, works. He says, I'm not really busy right now, but whenever the ground gets unfrozen and we get going. Yeah. And so now we're backed up and we talked to him yesterday, I believe we touched base through text message and he said, there's actually three more people in front of you now. It's like, are you kidding me? It's now the end of March. Yeah, possibly beginning of April. Yeah, so, but it is now the end of March. He said the beginning of March he would come out. I contacted him um, like maybe March 10th and mm -hmm. I said, hey, can you know, you have a date yet for when you're going to come out? I thought he was going to contact me, but he never did. And he said, no, I don't have a date yet. It'll probably be two to three weeks. Okay, well, now we're in the last week of March, mm -hmm. and I sent him another message, and I say, hey, you have a date yet? We can't move into our house until we have running water. And he says, uh, yeah, I don't have a date yet. It's probably going to be two or three weeks. That's what he said two or three weeks ago. So I don't know what to do right now. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, Ron, why don't you go out there and dig it? No. I would if we lived in Louisiana or Illinois, I'd Florida. dig it. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be about 500 foot. I can't dig that. It's and it's too rock, too. So I can't dig that. We live in a very hilly area. Yeah. It's a very mountainous area. So the well the Ozark is Mountains. deep. Yeah, we live in the Ozark yeah. Mountains. So it's very, we live right by Mark Twain National Forest. Yeah. So it's a very, very deep well. Now, back in the day, not everyone had wells. There's right. kind of like this little house on the prairie misconception. Like, oh, yeah, everyone had That's a well like in the That's from like the cow. 1890s. That has nothing. Please to... stop quoting little yes, house on the yes. prairie. I can't. Ah! There, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's there, killing me. There's nothing period correct about Little House on the Prairie. It's a, it's a, it's a, fantasy it's a Western fantasy from, from like, the 1890s. Eight, like 1890, which is like 80 years in the future from what we normally do yeah. here. We do. has no, nothing to do whatsoever with it. We focus on <laughs> the early 1800s, which stops at about 1830. That's my biggest gripe for somebody says, oh, they had that in the 1800s. Well, guess what else they had in the 1900s? They had cell phones, but guess what they didn't have in 1901? They didn't have cell phones, but they had cell phones yeah. in 1999. A hundred years. It's completely a different. Gap. 100 years completely different uh okay anyways so, back to our i don't even know what i was saying i'm sorry oh i was okay this well's i was got us upset okay i was talking about the well i was saying now out here not everyone would have had a well only probably a very wealthy person would have had a well out here i don't yeah, even want to tell you depth, yeah. i don't even want to tell you how much it's costing for us to dig our well right now it's bad it's really bad. So it's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. I mean, okay, so back then, if you live in a place like out here in the Midwest and you live in a hilly mountainous area where you could not possibly physically dig a well, mm -hmm. you would have to just put your house next to a stream or a river. Or collect water. Or collect water. Yeah, yeah that's how people did it. Not everyone had a well back then. Right. Yeah, so only saying that because I have a, a lawn, uh, a dishwashing video on Early American, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm like collecting the water from uh, a creek that we have. You yeah. know, some people are like, why don't you just have a well? And I'm thinking, because we ain't, we don't live in Louisiana, right. and we're not filthy, stinking witch, rich. The, <laughs> the Benjamin Stevenson house has a well. We're filthy, stinking poor. But they were filthy, stinking rich, and it, they're in Illinois. <laughs> filthy, stinking rich is a, uh, a good song by Warren, by the way, for those of you yeah. who like 80s hair metal. Anyways. Okay, uh, that's I, very period correct. Like, maybe, Little Moving house back. The By the way, what is that sitting over there? Okay, let's change the <laughs> subject now. 
Something else we can eat with our bread. Goat cheese. Goat cheese. I picked up some goat cheese today. Oh, I love goat cheese. There is a local goat farm here in St. Jimmy County mm -hmm. who has, um, how do I say this? They're very expensive artisanal cheeses and they provide to a lot of wineries and restaurants yeah. to St. Louis and Southeast Missouri. Um, Beige Farms, I believe. Now, we're not sponsored by them at all. We're just giving a shout out to a local company that makes a good product. We do that a lot. We That's give, what we do. Yeah, we give, we give shout outs to local people and Made in America stuff. We paid full price for that cheese. I just went to the grocery mm -hmm. store and picked this boy up today. Okay, so it's, in fact, this place is like five minutes down the road yeah. from us. But they always shape their cheese in, heart, in a heart shape. Aww. They have savory. They also have sweet. Sweet cheese? They have a chocolate flavored goat cheese. Hmm. So, um, this one's my favorite. Okay, uh, cut it open. Let's Herb see. de Provence. You know, that's the one with the <laughs> rosemary and the thyme in it. I love this stuff. I eat this for breakfast all the time on bread. I just wish it wasn't wrapped in plastic, you know? Hey, I need a knife. There you go. That's a big old bread knife, but I guess it's <laughs> the only one we got. Mmm, it tastes so good, though. I've been eating this for a long and time. And this one is the garlic? No, this is the... Dill. Herb de Provence. Hey, Provence. Fancy. Yeah, it's the one that has the uh, rosemary and the thyme in it. Oh, that's okay, that good. let's cut up some bread. I have a piece of Oh, right? okay, let me go ahead and put that on there for you. Well, thank you. Do you like goat cheese? I, I mean, I don't Normally, really see I don't meat. like goat cheese, but this stuff is pretty good. I don't like it when it's real stinky. Yeah, I think there's a way to make it so it isn't. You know, like the diet of the that's goat. Good. The type of goat and the cleanliness of your you. milking pails. Of your dairy. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah. I eat this for breakfast all the time. Just some homemade bread, goat cheese on it, and maybe... Oh, that made a terrible sound. I'm sorry. It's got just a tiny twang, but it's in a good way. Uh-huh. That is good. That's good. I eat this with some eggs for mm. breakfast, maybe fruit. Mm. So I have tea every single morning. Mm -hmm. Yep, every single morning I have tea with it. That's good. It's very good. The rosemary is oh, actually kind of hot. What? There's a lot of rosemary now. Mmm. Oh, man. You I love it. it. Nope, not at all. <laughs> hot rosemary? What do you want? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's so good. Though. You want more goat cheese? Yeah, I'll get some more. You know what? Here, have this. Oh. You already okay. cut it, but... That's fine. I'll eat it later. So, if you guys did, want, I cut it like that. No, if you guys Wait. are, I didn't want a big piece, so I cut it like that. I'm supposed to make us sandwiches tomorrow for when we go out well, to the house. Well, we're eating small sandwiches, I guess. But anyways, <laughs> if you guys are looking for some free events that are coming up, <laughs> there is an event over at the fort, Fort Richard. That is the first weekend, Saturday and Sunday of April. They're going to have. 18th century market. Art, yeah, market over there with artisans who make things and sell stuff and all that cool stuff. We'll be there just hanging yes, out. We will. And also, don't forget about the fourth annual Pioneer Days happening here in St. Genevieve on the first weekend of May. No, thank you. I don't want okay. that with this. And that is a good grand old time. Yep. Hey, so if you have any questions about the event, please contact our friend Candy at Sassafras Creek Originals. Um, if you look up her store on Google, the phone number for the store comes up. She also mm -hmm. has a store Facebook, a store Instagram. She has an online website where she sells things for her store. So contact her if you have any questions about Pioneer Days coming up. Yeah. You know what, though? I'm going to try the dandelion jelly on top of the mm -mm. goat cheese. Mm -mm. That's gonna You're going to be, too far. That's going to be really good. I've done, I've done it before that. with other jellies. You have? Not with dandelion jelly, but I've... Yes. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I chew a little slow now because oh, yeah, I can right. only eat on one side. I'm I keep sorry. forgetting. She hasn't really been in too much pain, or at least she hasn't made it verbal, so I forget that she had it removed. I have a high pain tolerance, but I'm in pain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me try this out. Okay. Does it work? It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, but here. it's not good? I would try it. Try it, Ron. Oh, man. Try it. All right. I'll try it. Last bite of the day. Here okay. Spice it mm. up. 
Mm-hmm. It's not terrible, but it's not... I wouldn't ask for it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Separate, yes. Hmm. Now, how am I supposed to make sandwiches tomorrow for our lunch when we go out to the house to work on the barn? Well... Because you cut the bread so weird! They're going to be little tiny sandwiches. <laughs> Well, oh, we're, well. We're, we're trying to lose weight, remember? I've lost three pounds, guys. I've lost three pounds because of my tooth issues over the last month. Yep. And I still can't properly fit in my wedding dress. It'll close, but you can tell it's really stressed looking. The fabric mm -hmm. is very stressed. I gotta lose at least another three pounds. I can Man. do it! This time we need to specify how we want to lose weight. Yeah, not Be through... Be careful what you ask for. Not through medical issues, please. Lord, help me lose weight. And then we didn't specify... And then I have health issues later. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Month and a half until we get married. A month and a half. A month and a half. May 11th. <laughs> well, I'm going to get off here, guys. We got work to do because we're almost out of time. A month and a half. A month and a half. So anyways, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Um, we won't always be able to put these out on Wednesday like we were in the past. Uh, oh, I think yeah. tonight is, what is tonight? Friday night? Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Where is time gone? Yeah. Uh, at least until midsummer. I mean, we, we might be on some Wednesdays again, but anything can happen right now. It's just right going to be a little random for a yeah. while. We apologize, but yeah. we're still going to try our best to get a video out to you every week. But our schedule is just chaos right, right. now. But whenever things do settle back down, mm -hmm. we'll we'll get back on on schedule yeah. routinely. Because I know you guys love edits, and we love that you guys love that. Because you guys are with us every Wednesday. Yes. Once the house is more done, we'll have more time to concentrate on our sanity and being oh, here on Wednesdays. I ain't got none left. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys. We love you. We'll see you next week. See you guys next week. We love you. Take care. Bye bye.